Hello everyone, David here. I'm an avid Samsung Galaxy Note user, and uh, it has a feature called DeX, which is kind of like a Windows desktop-like environment when you plug your mobile phone into any USB-C device and monitor. And I've been wondering for a long time if I can use DeX as a desktop PC or even laptop replacement. And um, it has a lot of the features I want, but I'm not sure if it's got all of them. So let's find out together if I can do some basic things and some more complex things as well using just Samsung DeX and no other computers. So this is my phone, and this is my secret weapon, which is a lovely 27-inch LG monitor. And the coolest thing is that it has this USB-C input. So I can connect that to the phone, and then that will go straight into Samsung DeX once it boots up. Um, and that means that the phone gets power. So I don't need any sort of extra dongles or anything like that. Um, and I'm ready to go into the environment as soon as I plug it in. Uh, the other very cool thing about it is that on the back of the monitor, um, it has some extra USB ports. So it'll function as a USB hub to plug in two more USB-A devices um, as well, which will be very convenient later on. So in terms of peripherals, I've saved a few ports by getting wireless Bluetooth devices. I've got the Logitech uh, K380 keyboard here. Um, it's very small, light, um, and convenient for carrying around. And I've got the Logi um, M590 mouse. Um, what's cool about both of these devices is that they will connect to multiple Bluetooth devices. So you can press these buttons and switch between which device you're controlling at any one time. Um, they take AAA batteries in the case of the keyboard and one AA battery in the case of the mouse. And they're actually both very nice to use, sort of made of a nice material, um, really light and comfortable. Um, the small keyboard takes a little bit of getting used to, but I think that's fine. And the keyboard also has um, a start button that works like a Windows start button, so you can press that and then it brings up all of your apps. Um, the only slightly annoying thing about that is that if you press it and then start typing, you often lose um, the first character that you were typing. So if you typed play, you'll just get lay instead. Um, now often it will find the app you're looking for when it does that, but still, it's kind of annoying. That feels like a software thing they can fix though. So just the general kind of look and feel of the environment is pretty nice. As a Windows user, I feel right at home. Um, I've got sort of various icons on my desktop, double click them, they open, uh, right click is supported on the mouse, um, they open in Windows as if they were running on a kind of small Android tablet. Um, you have something kind of like a Windows start button down here on the bottom left, and then you've got open apps and then a notification area down here on the bottom right where you control things like Wi-Fi and audio. Um, the special keys on the keyboard, like to control audio volume are piped through to the OS as well. And what's quite cool is that the monitor has got speakers built in. So after I installed the Smart Things app, I could then play audio through the monitor, all through this single USB-C connection on the device. So in terms of hardware and convenience, it's kind of got everything I need so far. So the big question is, will the apps support what I want to do? Okay, can you do video conferencing with the Samsung DeX uh, layout. Let's find out. Let's try a WhatsApp video call and let's see what happens. Okay, I think I can see one problem already. Hello. 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 Uh, so can you see me? I can. Uh, am I the wrong? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, how's this? this is better. Little better. Maybe um, not the greatest camera angle, but uh, still. Yeah, I mean, can you hear what I'm saying relatively clearly? And yeah. Okay. All, All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be working too. Okay. Cool. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Okay, that did seem to work. Um, not quite sure how it would work with every video conferencing app, but the ability to get the video feed and audio seems to be working just fine.
In order to read from an external hard drive, um, you might need to use some extra plugins. So mine are formatted with an um, NTFS format, file format. Um, FAT32 or FAT might be easier, but in order to read NTFS, um, you need to use both Total Commander, which is basically just a file explorer, um, but then you need to get the NTFS plugin uh, from the Play Store. So if you go and install um, Microsoft XFAT or NTFS by Paragon Software, um, that will then let you uh, mount that drive, and then you can read it. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately it is paid, so you'll need to pay um, in the UK £4.50 for NTFS or £10 to get full coverage of all um, uh, file systems. Uh, but yeah, um, it works really well. You mount the drive and then it will appear in uh, Total Commander. So if you go to the Microsoft XFAT NTFS um, and then all of your folders will show up in here and you have full uh, read and write access to all of those. Um, it's slightly awkward, but once you get over that hump of setting it up, it works great. So Google Drive works pretty well in its own app, um, and then you can open Google Sheets and uh, Google Docs as well from Drive, um, and they work kind of as you would expect. Um, it's a little bit like as if it was running in Google Chrome or some other web browser. Um, full keyboard support um, and also things like graphs are supported as well. So I'm pretty confident that I could get some productivity done if I was using uh, some of the Google Docs or Sheets applications. Um, and they seem to support kind of general data entry, using data and copying and pasting and things like that. So what about games? Um, I've tried a couple. Uh, so um, do you remember Baldur's Gate? <laughs> so it's been remastered uh, by a company called Beamdog. Um, in fact, they've made an, uh, their own original game called uh, Siege of Dragonspear as well. Um, let's have a go on that. So this is kind of amazing for me because I remember playing Baldur's Gate on my desktop PC and it just about had enough power to run it. Now it's running on my mobile phone and uh, using the video out to a giant 4K monitor. It's probably not running at 4K resolution, but it still looks really sharp. Um, and I'm playing it with a mouse and keyboard. Um, and it's quite cool to know that I could go traveling um, and with my portable mouse and keyboard and play this on the go um, just if I had any monitor that would accept an HDMI connection. The wall of bones down here. Bones and evil! That is the stench which Minsk sniffs. Uh, one very pleasant surprise was Oceanhorn. Um, it doesn't support Samsung DeX fully, so you have to restart it, uh, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but it supports the gamepad, so you get full gamepad play on a great big screen on Android, which has been done before, but this can also sit in your desktop environment as well, which is pretty cool. And Oceanhorn feels really nice on gamepad, like way better than when you play on the phone. Um, the controls are just much more fluid, and um, this is delightful to be able to play full screen on my Android device um, with audio and a wireless gamepad. Okay, so on to video editing. Is it even possible? Well, yes, obviously. Um, so you have a few options to choose from. Um, there's Cyberlink Power Director, which is okay. Uh, there's Kinemaster, and then a couple of offerings from Adobe, um, both Adobe Clip and Adobe Rush. Clip is the slightly older one, um, and Adobe Rush is now being kept up to date, um, or Premiere Rush, as it's called. Um, and as of today, July, 2019. That's the one I'd recommend. Um, it's a very fast moving space right now though, so that could change um, in the very near future. Um, the good news is that if you have Premiere Pro, it's included in your subscription already, so it's free. Um, but I mean that to say you're already paying for it. 
Um, if you don't have Premiere Pro, it'll cost you £10 a month, um, but it is the best one, so uh, it depends what you want to do. If you think you won't have multiple tracks of video, then you might be able to find one of the free options that works just as well. Let's have a look at Premiere Rush and just see what I can do with it. Okay, well I'm having my first technical issue already. Um, when I go to import my video from my Sony a7 III and put it uh, into my Premiere Rush project, um, I get an error. Uh, so I'll add it here and it just says could not import media and no explanation why. Um, I suspect because the video is 4K and I think I'm working on a 1080p timeline here and probably Rush doesn't expect um, a video of such high resolution so I'm going to try converting it down and seeing if it works at 1080p. Fingers crossed. Okay so I've managed to get around that problem. Um, I ran it through a program called uh, Video Converter by Vidsoft Lab. Um, I had to pay for that, it was just over two pounds. Um, I didn't have to uh, down res it to any less than 4K, so I kept it at 4K and it just re-encoded it, I think with a different codec. Um, it's a bit difficult to find out, unfortunately. Um, but after that, I could import it into Rush. Uh, so I'm ready to uh, start putting my video together now. So, as you can see, uh, I did make a video using entirely Samsung Dex, um, and I've done the whole workflow end-to-end, -end. so all of the video recording, copying onto the device, editing, exporting, and uploading to YouTube, I've done entirely within the mobile phone or in Samsung Dex. Um, and I kind of think it's amazing for that, that they've managed to turn this mobile operating system into a desktop OS. And I can totally imagine Google um, either integrating this into Android for everybody or just creating their own version of it, like Android desktop or something. Um, whether Samsung DeX is right for you depends very much on your use case. If you're doing something simple like browsing the web, using simple productivity apps, you're going to be fine. If you're doing something a bit more complicated, like editing a video like this one, um, you're going to have to get a a bit more sort of your hands dirty and it's going to be fiddly and you might have to find a couple of workarounds but they exist and if you're doing something much more complicated like making a virtual reality video or software development you're probably going to have to stick with your desktop or laptop for now because i don't see microsoft visual studio um, coming to android anytime soon but you never know um, in my case i think i would consider taking this if i was traveling and i needed to go really really light like I couldn't take my laptop for some reason then I could just take my phone power adapter dongle wireless keyboard and mouse and then plug into various monitors um, along the way and that would kind of work um, whether it's right for you or not depends on exactly what you want to do and what kind of environment you want to use in the future I sort of envision this scenario where we all have our mobile phones for day-to-day -day use and then we unfold them to become tablets when we need to do something with a bigger screen. And then we plug that in to a monitor and that becomes our desktop PC. Um, and that kind of future quite excites me because then we can have all of our stuff, all of our apps and all of our data on one device and take it with us wherever we go. Um, that future might be five years away or it might be 50 years away. Um, we'll only just know by having to wait and see. But it's kind of an exciting future as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, then please hit the like button down there and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.